Hey, what is up? It's Zach, your YouTube foot doctor, and I have the Babolat Jet Mach 3 today. As you can see, I've already scuffed it up a little bit. If you're watching this here on the replay, I, I'm going to timestamp all of this here. Uh, so that you can see kind of just the, my similar reviews. Typically I go through like the uppers, midsole, outsole, and then the fit. Then I go through the play test. I'm also going to be reviewing uh, the court jam bounces that I actually made the custom Dominic team and Garabin Muguruza shoe with. I kind of give some of my thoughts on that as well as the new Wilson chaos line. Uh, they have two new shoes out there uh, that I have gotten to hit with. Um, I don't have them here, but I have hit with them and I have had three friends that have hit with them. And I do have a couple of specific things I really want to touch on with the Wilsons uh, and that new outsole tread designs and things you really need to keep in mind uh, prior to purchasing them. So I actually did uh, just put some things together with the shoe. I just kind of wanted to give the shoe uh, just like a 50,000 foot overview. And then we'll go into the specifics on what is new from the Jet Mach 2 into here in the Jet Mach 3. And if I have time, I will cut them open today. If not, I will do the cross section uh, in the community section of the feed. But I am really glad everyone really liked the Dominic Team and Garabin Muguruza shoe uh, custom build. If you want to see that video, it, I think it's linked down below in the description. You can check that out. Uh, hey, Aiden, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I was one minute late too. All right. So I'm just going to put this video up here just so you guys can kind of see the, the shoe in high def here because I know live streams only go to about 720p. So with the uppers of the new Jet Mach 3, it is a little bit different than the Jet Mach 2. So if you look at the Jet Mach 2, you can kind of see through it. Let me just look here. The Jet Mach 2, you can kind of see through the uppers, right? And you just put your finger right through them, air gets through them. That is a really light Kevlar weave. Now, Kevlar is really strong in terms of pull strength. So if you're pulling it right, it won't break. However, if you watch the teardown video of the Jet Mach 2, my knife went right through it. And the Dremel kind of scuffed it up pretty good too. The new Jet Mach 3 uppers is made of, so it's an Aramid and a polyamide mix. Now, an aramid is what they use for uh, bulletproof vests, uh, ballistic shield armor, so it is pretty strong. Now, a polyamide is just a fancy word for nylon. So it, it is just a, a weave of, of kind of a Kevlar substitute, a little bit lighter and softer Kevlar, and then nylon. Now, the one thing I'll say about the Jet Mach 3 uppers is they broke in immediately. And even though I looked on uh, Tennis Express, Tennis Warehouse, Midwest Sports, and Babolat, they say it is a snug medium. In my regular 11 and a half US size, I, I had zero break in with it. I didn't feel snug whatsoever. They did feel just a tad wider than the Jet Mach 2s did. Hey, Bill, how's it going? So, uh, you can't, he's not going to beat Nadal on clay. Um, put pin that right up there. Yeah, he's. I I I can't I can't imagine Djokovic beating Nadal on clay, if Djokovic was having that much trouble with Berrettini. Berrettini was hitting his cross court forehand pretty well, but uh, still, I'll take a Nadal. You can't bet against him at Roland Garros. So with the uppers, they also changed another thing that I thought was really interesting, and that is the toe drag guard here on the medial side of the shoe, right around the big toe joint. Sorry, I'm looking down. I just want to make sure you guys see the uppers of it. They changed it from this kind of stuck on pattern to more of, it looks like a jet stream. It almost looks like the jet stream of a airline like when uh like when wind goes over an airline uh, wing or an airplane wing and that's pretty cool because it now camera it bends a lot easier but they also have the shoelace line integrated with it so that's another thing you get a ton of durability protection with the dremel test on 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper it's this one i did it on maybe a millimeter of damage if you can see that maybe a millimeter ah. If that. Now, if you look at the top, look, I scuffed that up pretty good with the Dremel too. So that ballistic, you know, body armor stuff, I mean, it might be good for, I don't know, combat, but it, it's not good for a uh, $80 Dremel. Um, so it is still going to wear down pretty good, but because it's cased in all that rubber over here, that DuraGuard traction layer, it, it's, it's going to be really good. Tense boy. He already bought the Wilson Cash Swift and they're amazing. Love them still to his top due to the improved outsole, which is wider. Um, I'm going to talk about those a little bit later in the stream. Um, I have had a few people actually come into the office already because of the chaos. Uh, so we'll be talking about them a little later in the stream once I get through the Babolats. Now, 
I, I really, like I said, I really do like the uppers, how they broke in. It's a little bit wider, but I think what the biggest difference is on the Jet Mach 3s versus the Jet Mach 2s in the midsole area is how much softer and more spongy and elastic the midsole is. It is still an entirely, uh, it's still a midsole entirely based of EVA, but it is more of the like React foam. Where's my React foam shoe? It is more of the React foam, like in the Vapor Next, uh, versus something like the old Jet Mach 2 or Jet Mach 1, where it was like almost like a crepey feeling, right? It was almost like something you'd make EVA foam out of for like Comic Con. On the serve test on these, which is not as much pop as I was getting on the Jet Mach 2s, but these were much more comfortable from the start. Uh, on the suicide test, it was about 14.79 seconds, which was right around the same time as the Dominic team and Garabine Muguruza shoe. So they are still really fast. The one reason why these go so fast front to back is because they actually changed up the last. So as you can see here on the Jet Mach 2 versus the Jet Mach 3, the heel is a lot more narrow. See how it tapers here, whereas this one really didn't. So you are you do get a lot faster up and down motion with the Jet Mach 3. It doesn't feel as stable side to side. Whereas the Jet Mach 2, because you kind of sink into that EVA foam, you really feel super stable stable and like really low to the ground. Whereas the Jet Mach 3, you get a super cushioned feel and a lot more of like an aerodynamic feel. So you feel like you can really run front to back really fast. They're not nearly as stable side to side, at least up in my head. It still does have a super wide lateral flange. You can see it better here on the outsole. See how wide that lateral flange is? Really nice. So it, it is still stable. It just doesn't feel as stable as the Jet Mach 2 did. Now the outsole, they changed just a little bit. As you can see here, they don't have the cross rubber on the back. See, it just, it's all continuous now. And now instead of these punched out lines here, these racing stripes, they're actually indented and that's for sliding on a hard. Now lose a stream. Yeah, it still does have the, sorry, I think I lost you there for a second. Yes, it still does have the Michelin outsole. I'll put this up here. Yeah. And actually what's weird about, so I'll just go into the durability test. Now, if you can see that durability test, it not even a millimeter on this one, whereas the old jet mocks, uh, it was a little bit worse. Uh, that Goodyear rubber was really not known for its durability here. You can actually see the old ones. This is the one I did the durability test on. You can actually see it right there, right up here. So this one was a little over a millimeter. This one, not even a millimeter. So they did improve the durability. There is no outsole durability guarantee on these, but they are just as good as pretty much anything else on the market right now, besides the Vapor Cage 4 and the Vapor Next, because these things have like the hardest rubble you'll ever see, uh, and they need it for how heavy the shoe is. So yeah, um, and I, th I think I think with Michelin, it's a lot easier when these companies are using an outside rubber manufacturer because they're just constantly testing things for their tire rubbers. So just like Lotto with Vibram, Vibram, I mean, that's all they make is rubber. I mean, they're making more minimalist shoes. So when Lotto gets these really super durable shoes, it's not Lotto making them. They're outsourcing it to just a really specific company. Same with Michelin. You know, you can expect basically every year that Babolat makes a shoe, the rubber is going to get a little better and a little better. When Andy Roddick first like really brought Babolat shoes out on the like really out on the market with the Pro Pulse, the rubber stunk. It really wasn't very good because uh, I bought his first shoe uh, with the American flag on it and, and the stripes, the, the the Pro Pulse Roddick or whatever it was called, and I, I burned through them really quick. And then like the second iteration was a little better, and, and now Goodyear is kind of really finding their stride. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see Goodyear getting way more into the basketball and running scene pretty soon because they are really doing well uh, with their rubbers. So Aiden Young says, yeah, Novak. Yeah, I mean, he, he might. So, okay. Let's get into a little bit here of the play test. Let's have this here. I'll make this full screen. So the one thing I noticed when play testing is I play tested these for maybe, I, I think I probably had them out four times. And this was the last time I had them out just hitting against the wall. But one thing I noticed is it is just super easy to just move really quick. As you can see, the shoe gets out of your way really fast. And what I like about it is I toe drag on my forehand, uh, my open stance forehand. I'm always dragging my back foot for some reason. It's a stupid habit and it's going to get me injured one day. But that's just kind of how I do it. And I did notice with these, with that um, 
more jetline streamed uh, durability guard on the medial side. Uh, it was really good, really, really good for kind of sliding on the court. It kind of just some shoes catch when I do that. These didn't catch whatsoever. So these just felt really, really sharp. And I did feel once I was playing in the more, I know this sounds weird, as I played in the more, it felt like they got a little bit springier and more responsive. Whereas when I first took them out of the box, they, they just they felt just kind of cushy. Like they were more like a casual shoe. And then I started playing in the more and breaking them in. And then all of a sudden it just started reacting to me a little bit better. I, I'm not really sure if that was just me kind of getting used to the shoe uh, or if it was um, just just yeah, just my uh, just my mind. So as you can see here, that rubber. See how it's or that I'm sorry, the foam, the midsole foam. How it's just compressing into there so easily. And you can see that DuraGuard right there bending really nice. Uh, the Michelin rubber really does engage on a hard court. Uh, just not so much. Don't try these on clay. You might be able to get away with these on carpet actually uh, because of the uh, jutted out outsole tread design. But I'm gonna show this again. This midsole. See how they just see how that just just pushes in like that. It's super cushy. It's really nice. Okay. Let's so get back on the screen here. So in, yeah, that's not me. So in terms of play testing these, they play a ton like the Jet Mach 2s. You're just not going to get that super quick responsiveness from the Jet Mach 2s. The one thing I will say about the Jet Mach 3s in terms of all the 2021 shoes, these are the most comfortable on the market right now. This is probably, I would say, the most comfortable shoe you can buy right now. It, I still think the Nike GP Turbo has the best midsole construction with the strobel bag and then the full-length zoom air unit and then the Phylon. However... Or in terms of just initial comfort, just stepping into a shoe, you want something super comfortable. I, this is it right here. And in terms of someone that has any heel pain or arch pain, a new pair of the Jet Mach 3s is probably going to be the most comfortable shoe out there for you right now because of just how soft and cushioned, but how dense the foam is in the midsole. So I, I really think if, if I were going to you know describe these in one word, you know, the thing I normally do, it would be comfortable just because... It, I have not put on a shoe that I just slide into first time. And I just think like it's super comfortable. Now that EVA is going to bottom out pretty quick. I would say faster than something else that has a harder foam in it. But uh, in terms of initial quality, initial uh, comfort, there's just not much better here than the Jet Mach 3. All right. What are some questions here? All right, my heel slips right out of all Adidas tennis shoes and some Asics, but it doesn't with Nike. I currently use the Cage 3, but I want to try some other brands. Any ideas? So probably the reason on the Cage 3 is because the entry into the Cage 3 is so tight with that one-piece tongue. I, I can't believe that it would slip out of something like the Soul Court Boost that has the molded ankle collar. Um, if it is, you know, you can try to put moleskin around the collar take the shoe out. I'm alive. I can just take the shoe out. You can put moleskin or some sort of felt around the collar that'll suck your foot into it, which would be really nice. Um, or if you're going with Nike, remember the cage three, the GP turbo has a super high heel counter. So it's pretty hard to slip out of the GP turbo. Um, I slip out of the gel resolution eight and the original solution speed, the new solution speeds are a little better for that. Um, but if you have a super high arch, this, this heel counter is a little bit better, but you're still going to slip out of a little bit. Um, if I were you, I'd probably stick with, if you are going to stick with something, I'd probably just go to the GP turbo. If you're going to stick with Nike, if it were me, um, you can also go with something, like I said, with a molded ankle collar, uh, something like the Diodora blue shield fly fours or the blue shield fly threes, whichever the newer one is that I reviewed. Those have a molded ankle collar as well. Hope that helps. Cassio, what, uh, what shoe are you talking about? The, Babylon. Um, no, I mean, actually they tie down really well. That's one thing I didn't get to. If you look at the shoelace line on the Babylon, this is actually something I wanted to get to. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Um, if you look here, the, sh the laces actually go horizontal into the uppers. So the uppers cinch down really well. Um, which I really like. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I really like how these cinch down into the uppers. Uh, and like I said, this shoe isn't going to last in terms of the midsole, like another shoe would. Like if you saw my A6 gel resolution eight, like three or four months later video, I did before 
it, that even that midsole, I mean, Asics flight foam is one of the best foams out there. And even that bottomed out, even before their rubber bottomed out, that midsole was completely trashed. You know, I got a bunch of comments on that video, like, oh, the, the, the outsole doesn't look worn enough. You know, this, this wasn't like a real video. No, it's just that the person wearing them doesn't slide at all, but they're a hefty person. So they were just pounding into the midsole. So the midsole just completely failed. So that, that shoe was pretty much toast. This shoe, I would say if the same person was wearing this, I probably wouldn't even give them two, two and a half months in it uh, just because they were pretty heavy. Now, if you're a lighter player, and you're looking for speed or you're looking for comfort, then you're not going to, the outsole isn't going to wear out as quick. So you might do really well. So this is probably the best shoe out there, maybe for someone who's a lighter player, because this only comes in at about 12.1 ounces for a 10 and a half men's. So it is a still, it's a pretty light shoe in terms of, you know, shoes that we're seeing nowadays getting up into the 16 ounces for shoes. Um, and it feels really light too, because of how responsive the midsole is. So I would say if you're a lighter player, uh, this, this will get you going pretty good. Question. Tiny Dude Extreme. That's a good name. Uh, what would you recommend? Nike Court Light or Vapor Light? That's a good question. Uh, it depends on what you want. The Vapor Light is much, 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 can't say it enough times, more comfortable than the Court Light 2s. The Court Light 2 probably give you just a little bit more support under your foot. So if you're going to use the Vapor Light, I, I usually will tell my patients to put an insert into there of some kind, even if it's just a power step or super feet. Uh, if you want to check those out there in the link, there's a link to them in the description. Uh, if you want to see what I'm talking about, but it, I would put something in it. The court light too is, is made of like synthetic leather and it's a harder phylon. So it's just, it's just a much more stiff shoe, but the, the vapor light much, much, much more comfortable, much more comfortable. Hey Mo, my foot slides around in the cage four and hurts the outside of my foot. Any shoe advice? Yeah, of course. The I think I have a vapor cage four sitting around here. I have a million shoes around here that's sitting around. Oh, here's one right here. I will show you why your foot is doing that. All right, here's vapor cage four. Outside of your foot, right? Okay. So this is a two-piece tongue. All right. So when you tie the tongue, all these laces on the outside are yanking the outside of the shoe in like this, right? So every time you move and the laces engage, you're putting pressure right in this plastic clip right on the outside. So literally any other shoe will probably be better. This is like one of my least favorite shoes out there, only second to this one. So these two are probably like, you know, in terms of comfort, the, the Vapor Next is fantastic. It's a super comfortable shoe. But the Vapor Cage 4 is one of the most uncomfortable shoes out there. So if you're looking for something similar to the Vapor Cage 4, I would say just go with... Sorry, Mike. If you're looking for something like the Vapor Cage 4, go with the just the GP Turbo. That's what I would do. Or I know this is cut lengthwise, but you know with the Blue Shield flies. That feels a lot like the Vapor Cage 4. Just a much better construction of a shoe. This is the Blue Shield Fly 3s, not the Blue Shield 5s. I know they... Theodore really doesn't do well with naming their shoes. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I, I think I think in terms of comfort, the Diodora midsole is probably see the blue shield right there. See all that blue shield foam right there. These are super comfortable, especially in, in the forefoot. They do have some issues with pinching when you break them in. So make sure you check out my video before you uh, purchase just to see if that's something that, that would bother you. Um, but if you're coming from somewhere like the Cage 4, I, I would go with GP Turbo. Uh, personally, that's the first place I would go. But if second, I would probably go with Fly Blue Shield Fly 3. What about the Jet Mach 3 for clay courts? Yeah, so Cassie, I actually talked about this like way early in the stream. I'm sorry, I should probably repeat myself. Um, here you go. If you look at that tread in the center, that's fine for clay courts. The heel, that's probably fine for a good clay court. This outside piece right here is terrible. So anytime you're going to go laterally, this will not engage on a clay court because it's stamped. See, all it doesn't, there's no cut in the rubber. So the rubber is continuous and there's stamps of uh, indentation that won't engage a clay court. Neither will the inside because it's too light. So I, if you're going to use it on the clay court, it better be a super well-maintained clay court. Uh, I think dry clay that this might just slide all over the place. You can try. It's an all court tread. They say, um, I use the jet mock twos 
on clay and they were horrific. I've used the pro pulse furies on clay and they were horrid. So I, I wouldn't, if I were you, I, it, when I, Babylon doesn't have any clay treads in my area in, in the United States. Um, but in Europe, if you're coming from over there, you might be able to get actually the clay treads of them. It is a super agile shoe for clay. It really is. Cause the uppers are really, um, Streamline, they're super light. The DuraGuard just allows your foot to move super easy. You know, you can drag the shoe along. It's got a nice lateral flange on it right there. I'm like reverse from the camera. So yeah, it is great. It's just the the, the treads. I you'd have to check it out. That the treads, I don't think I would trust. Hey Santiago, I find it hard to know whether the midsoles have bottomed out or not. Any advice apart from looking for creases? Comfort, you know, the, the creasing is the best way to tell. Um, once you start to see those really obvious creases, that's when the cells of the EVA or the TPU, TPU is hard to tell, like boost foam is really hard to tell if it's bottomed out because it takes so long to bottom out boost. Uh, boost lasts forever. Actually, here you go. Here are boost. Here's the boost that I took off for the Dominic team shoe. It's just, it's so hard to tell because look, it's textured, right? And boost is made of thermopolyurethane. So it keeps its shape really well. So um, if you're using something like a TPU type shoe, it, it's going to be a little harder to tell. I would just say you start to look for comfort. If you look at the Jet Mach 2s, look at all those. The camera might not show it very well. But if you look at all those creases, I mean, this thing has just been torched. So, all right. I usually gravitate toward Nike. So currently, would you say the best Nike shoe overall or should I switch from Nike altogether? Well, Joe, it depends. So it, Nike makes two of my least favorite shoes, which we already talked about, which are these two. These are the two worst shoes in the market, in my opinion, right here. The If you want, look at my video comparing the Vapor next to the Court Light 2, you'll see why. However, they also make two of my favorite shoes, which one is the Vapor Pro. This was the one I got before they were released, the Vapor Pro. And the GP Turbo is somewhere under my feet. I don't feel like going to get it, but the GP Turbo. So if you're going to stick with Nike, if you want minimalist, I would go with Vapor Pro. They're probably the most nimble shoe on the market right now. This is actually probably a close second in terms of nimble. Uh, and if you want the most comfortable shoe, one of the most comfortable shoes on the market right now, uh, I, th I think the GP Turbo, uh, it, hands down, it's still in my top five shoes. So if you look at my top five shoe video, that's probably the first place to look because both of those shoes are on the list, but I kind of go in a little more detail on that there. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, yeah, G, like I said, GP Turbo is fantastic. So let's talk about the difference between Wilson 3.0 and 3.5. This is actually a great time to get into my little presentation about the Wilson Chaos. So I will get to the 3.0 and 3.5. All right, I will not be able to see anybody here for a second. So give me, let, just give me one second. I'm going to get this up here and share my screen. Because I put together just a little thing that I can talk about with the Wilson Chaos and kind of why I have some reservations about this shoe. All right. So here's the Wilson Chaos. First, I want you to look at is the heel counter. It There's no structure to it. All the structure is on the outside. If you see that little outcropping of it, that's just for show. Okay. They are super comfortable when you first put them on. They're like putting on a pair of Ugg slippers. If you ever put on like those sheepskin Ugg slippers, they are just ridiculously comfortable uh, because there's nothing to them, right? It's just like, it's like uh, mesh paper, but that heel counter is not going to hold you in for anything. But the part of the shoe that I find to be the most dangerous is the outsole tread. It is a linear pattern. It's just a straight line pattern. Now we never do this. We learned our lesson from this, from football on Astro American football on AstroTurf. Now people were hyper extending their knees, breaking their ankles on this. These treads, especially if you play on carpet or clay, carpet more than clay, but clay too, these treads will end up digging into the court and then there's no linear pattern in this. Remember, herringbone is, is linear. It makes zigzags, right? It's not straight. There's a reason why it's not straight. And that's because you need to have some sort of, let me get myself back here. And that's because you need to have some sort of break in the tread so that air can get through there or the surface can get through there so that the, the, the shoe will still go on the court. You want it to engage, right? That's why part of the herringbone is, li is linear, right? So some of it's linear, but then it outcrops, right? 
if it's just straight, um, let me get this back on here. Add to stream. If it's just, if it's just this straight herringbone, it's going to lock into the court and you can go, you know, head over feet on these shoes. The way the one person who was wearing these described it to me is when you have baseball cards in the spokes of your bike, like when you were a kid, that's what it feels like underneath your foot. The shoe is literally rattling around under your feet. Uh, I have big problems, honestly, with this shoe. I, 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 I'm I, not sure that I would want anybody that I was, tr you know, a friend of using these. They also just have the Swift, just have one strap. You know, that's fine if you're just feeding balls. If you're a teaching pro, that's fine. Now, even the other Chaos, which is like the more stout Chaos, um, as you can see here, it has shoelaces, but look at the bottom of them. It, it's still that linear pattern. And that is just really dangerous. Uh, like I said, we've learned these lessons uh, from football, European football or real football uh, boots. We've also learned them from American football on AstroTurf. Uh, we've, we've learned these lessons before. I'm not really sure what the idea was here for these. Um, I'm not trying to throw Wilson under the bus. I have nothing against Wilson. I play with Wilson rackets almost my entire life. Uh, and I've used Wilson shoes in the, in the past. And I have about 15 friends that are Wilson reps, uh, including someone you should follow on Instagram, Gavin Glider and Alex Chan. Make sure if you go there and follow them and Chris Clark, he's taught uh, toss and spin tennis. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. Tell him I sent you. Um, they're all Wilson reps and they're all great friends of mine. Um, but this shoe in particular is it to me is dangerous. Um, so like I said, I don't, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. I'm not trying to be angry or mean. Um, but if you're going to buy a Wilson shoe, get the Amplifield 2.0 or the Rush Pro 3.5. And that's where we go into the Rush Pro 3.5. The 3.5 is basically a little bit of a cosmetic update. It's mostly to do with the uppers of the shoe they're going to be a little bit more uh, constrictive on your foot. They're just going to be a little bit more secure. Uh, not much difference in the 3.0, to be honest. It, it, if I were you, pick the one that you like the colorway in the best and just get it. Uh, if that that were me, that would be my uh point of view on, on that shoe. Um, but either one is fine. The 3.0 and the 3.5, I consider them workhorse shoes. Uh, they're, they're not the best shoes in the world. They're also not the worst. Uh, they're kind of just right in the middle. If you just need something um, that they, they will do just fine. I don't love Wilson's midsole foam. I think it's a little harder and a little bit more difficult to deal with. Um, but their midsole shanks, uh, midsole shank, I think is the best on the market because it's a shark fin. Um, and so it's super light. So it keeps the shoe a little bit lighter, but gives you more support than just about any other shoe on the market. So I, I do think if you're looking for more support uh, underneath your foot, the, the 3.0 or the 3.5 is, is just fine. I just, in terms of the chaos, I, I think this is fine if you're just a teaching pro and you just want something like uber comfortable to stand in all day and it's hot out. Let's say it's like, you know, 105 degrees out Fahrenheit. Uh, and you're teaching all day, then yeah, that chaos, that chaos swift is awesome, you know, cause it'll just breathe super well. Um, but if I'm playing a five O match, uh, and you want a Wilson shoe best go with the Amplifield or rush pro hope that helps. How's the react vapor next? Um, Benedict, uh, not my favorite shoe we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, not my favorite shoe. Make sure you look, I have three videos on it. One is the play test. One is the head to head with the vapor cage four. And the other one is the head to head with Nike's cheapest shoe, the court light Two. check those out. You'll get a lot of my thoughts on it. I am not a huge fan because of the elastic tongue. It's just the Achilles heel in the shoe. Everything else about the shoe. I actually really like, it's just that tongue makes the shoe to me. Not great. Um, I do have another video coming out on it though, which you will really want to watch. It is going to be even better than this one. All right. Not a prop. This is a great question. Uh, which shoe is best for midsole longevity? So uh, I would probably say if you're looking for longevity, I don't have the actual, I don't have the complete shoe in here because I've torn it apart 300 times, but the Adidas Soul Court Boost is the best one for actual midsole longevity. That doesn't mean it's the best shoe. You know, it, it's, it's going to last you, the midsole is going to last you the absolute longest. 
it, it won't perform as well as even something like the Quart Jam Bounce, which is like half the price. Uh, the React Vapor Next, super long life on the midsole, as well as Vapor Cage 4. And to some extent, the GP Turbo is going to have a super long life because it's made mostly of air. Uh, the uppers are not going to last you as long, but uh, in terms of midsole longevity, I, I would say anything with boost foam it is probably going to be the, the, the most length of time. Some of the K-Swiss models will last you forever too. The, the K, not, not the Ultra Shot 3, the one I just reviewed, but some of the other line, the Hypercord Express and, and those, they have super long lasting midsoles. <laughs> Roland, it's not that I'm not a Nike fan. I, I am a, I'm an absolute fan of the Vapor Pro and the GP Turbos. It's just not everything. It, Nike likes to experiment. Nike loves to experiment with things. Sometimes they hit home runs and sometimes it's just crash and burn. Uh, but that's great. You know, I mean, th I think that's good. That's, that's what pushes shoe technology. Tiny Dude Extreme. If you were to play a match tomorrow, what racket would you use and which shoe would you wear? All right, so that brings me to what racket I just switched to. Um, if you had an eagle eye in any of the videos recently, you probably saw it, but I did actually just switch to the uh, Radical Pro. I'm stringing this right now because I don't really, I'm still getting used to it, but I'm stringing it right now at 52 pounds with just regular head sin gut. Um, I'm going to go to probably Gamma Rough or TNT rough or Wilson NXT with Duramax this. So I'm used to playing with the RF 97, the original and my RF 97s are old, right? So they're pretty dead. So I've been swinging like crazy. If you look at my swing, I'm taking this. I never took this kind of a, a take back with these. My balls are coming over like howitzers. Um, and that's great. I'm getting a ton more pace. And I find with this racket, I've never served better than with this racket. If you watch, uh, the Dominic team video, you'll see like my kick serves are getting way more height now because I'm getting the racket through the ball quicker. I also went back. I was using a four and a half grip. Now I'm using a four and five eights again, and it's just made all the difference in the world. So it's given a little more weight in the handle, which I like. Um, but if I had to play a match tomorrow, yeah, I'd probably use this uh, just because it's been giving me so much power. Um, I just need something in the string bed. That's just going to give me a little bit more uh, control because it's, it's been getting a little bit hairy. Uh, and in terms of what shoes would I wear, if I had to play a match, like a match shoe, uh, probably the Vapor Pro. Uh, in terms of just an everyday shoe, uh, I'd probably want the GP Turbo. And if, you know, a match shoe that's not on the market, but the Dominic team and Garabin Mukarutha shoe, that'd probably be the shoe I would use. But uh, in terms of right now, what's on the market right now, and I had to play a match, it'd probably be the Vapor Pro. Wilson shoes are the most expensive here in Brazil. I would love to know why that's the case. That's very interesting. Roland, thanks for the Wilson feedback. Uh, so w Roland Blue is 3.0 is up. They were solid. Yeah, the Rush Pros have, Wilson's been making that same shoe for a long time. They just kind of tweak the last and they tweak the colorways and the aesthetics of it. That shoe has been refined over a long period of time. That's why I say it's a workhorse shoe. Everyone's gonna. No one hates them. You know what I mean? They're they're just there's something for everybody in there. They're they're not gonna blow you away. Like you know when I when I first put on the GP Turbos, I just said to myself like this is a new type of shoe. This is fantastic. Like I can't wait to make a video on this. Or like the Rush Pros. It would be if I if if I if I had to pick. You know if I was like if I had to play. You know if I was playing Nadal today at the French Open and someone had all these shoes lined up and there was all this crazy tech and then the Rush Pro 3.0 or 3.5s were there. A lot of times I might pick that over a shoe that let's say like Nike had their brand new shoe that I didn't know anything about. I'd still pick the Rush Pro just because I know that I could play a match in them and I could kind of count on them. Um, but let's say they were up against something like the Vapor Pro uh, or the Diodoras and yeah, I pick those. But in terms of just uh, consistency, yeah, Wilson has just about the most consistent shoes out there. Uh, it's just not. Um, not the chaos line. Uh, so Benjoy picked up the GP turbo last year after review, very comfortable, but narrow forefoot had to get a half size higher when the upper stretched out the heel starts slipping. You know, what's interesting is the first iteration of the GP turbo, those white and purple ones that I reviewed, like back when I first started my channel, they were wider in the forefoot. I don't know. I, I think they might have started manufacturing them a little different because I recently bought a pair 
about a month or two ago to review for pickleball. And I noticed the same thing. The forefoot all of a sudden a little bit more narrow. Um, and my feet haven't changed sizes. So I, I'm wondering if, if Nike changed the last on them. Cause I know I got a really early pair of them. Like when I first came out and that was the first, and they only had one colorway. And so I'm thinking they, they may have, they may have switched something a little bit of it. What shoe, if you're talking about this one, um, if you're over a two E I'd go up a half size. And I think, uh, I, I would, I I'd be comfortable going up a half size. If I were over a two E I am a two E and I went with my regular size zero break in. They were, like I said, th the jet mock three right now. That's why I wanted to do a live stream on these. They are the most comfortable shoe of 2021 so far. Rolling the Eclipsian three. You think Yonex is coming out? Yeah. Okay. This is a great question. Do you think Yonex is coming out with another Eclipsian? I hope. Uh, cause I think the Eclipsian three is one of the best shoes on the market. Um, if you look at my best shoes for clay, uh, check that video out. You'll like that. Uh, if you're into the Eclipsians, I think they stack up just fine with everything else. Um, their heel counter and their treads are some of the best on the market right now. I, I don't love their shank. You know, they, they say it's this carbon fiber and it, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a gimmick, but th the rest of the shoe, uh, is, is phenomenal. I, I really like it. Wilson Babalot and Fila shoes are almost the only shoes that are regularly available in Argentina. Wilson Babalot and Fila. So Fila is an interesting shoe. That Axilus 2 is like one of the best selling shoes in the world, I found out. Um, I think all because of pickleball, because they make one with actual pickleballs painted on it. Um, the Axilus 2 Energize is, is not my favorite shoe. Um, I don't know how Ash Barty is using those shoes and moving so well. Same with Diego Schwartzman, like two of the best moving tennis players in the world use that shoe. I, I found that my foot was just moving back and forth. Now I'm also like, you know, a lot heavier than they are. Uh, so maybe it's just me and I'm just putting so much weight on the shoe and, and that's why it's not working for me. Maybe for a lighter player, it's better. So maybe if I lost 20 pounds and played on it again, uh, I'd notice a difference. But um, if I were you, Santiago, it, if that's the only things you can get there, I would say my depending on your foot type, but if you're just a regular foot type, I would probably go with the Jet Mach threes just because they're so comfortable. Um, and if you're looking for a clay shoe, that maybe the, the Wilsons would probably suit you a little better. All right. Pat, how's it going? It looks like the Jet Mach has the same angled lacing as the Cage and the Vapors. Yes. What is the benefit purpose? Let me take a sip from my Slippery Rock University cup. Um, so. Uh, what it does is, is when it has this horizontal lacing pattern, it just ties, I actually have it. I have one laced here. It actually ties the uppers a little bit more securely around your foot. So when you're lacing one loop, it's integrating more with it. So it envelops your foot a little bit more. So it allows Babolat to make the shoe lighter, but still you're, you're still getting a ton of security in the shoe. That's why they do that. Now, Nike did that with a two piece tongue. So what happens is when you're yanking on the, the tines, when you're yanking on the shoelaces and the eyelets, it's just pulling one side of the shoe over. And so that's why everyone gets pain on the outside of their foot. Whereas on the Babolats, it's just a regular three piece tongue. So you're getting even tension. Also the uppers of the Babolats are just much more forgiving than the Vapor Cage 4. If you've seen the Vapor Cage 4, I mean, the, the uppers, I mean, it's like terry cloth, like the old Pete Sampras, uh, polos. It's like a stick terry claw. So it's really kind of constrictive. Whereas the jet mock super light. Uh, so more, more people's feet can, um, accommodate it. Do you think the next gen tennis shoes will use carbon fiber plates? So, um, what's the Yonix is using, it's like a graphite type. They, they call it so carbon fiber graphics have a carbon fiber. So the Yonix is using one. Um, there is a orthotic company Actually, just give me one second. I know I'm going off stream here, but let me go over here. There's an orthotic company that actually just sent me these. These are the victory. I haven't tested these out. This is not an endorsement or anything like that. Um, make one with a carbon fiber plate. Now, if you look at this, so carbon fiber is supposed to be like super stiff, right? But with these, like you can still bend them, right? So uh, it's lighter. Like carbon fiber is much lighter than polypropylene, which is this stuff, which is plastic, right? But I still find plastic to be a little bit more, you can mold it a little better. So I, I'm not sure people are going to go with more carbon fiber plates because you can just mold polypropylene plastic into more shapes. And so you can make the shanks of the shoe a little bit more ergonomic. Um, 
I'm very interested to try these. I'm actually going to do a review on these versus power steps. So these are like 200 some bucks power steps are like 20, 30 bucks, uh, depending on what market you're in. Uh, so I'm actually going to do a head to head because victory says that you get higher jump and faster, like 40, uh, time. So I'm actually really interested to see. So if you want to find more about carbon fiber plates, make sure you're subscribed. So you see this video. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, Yonex is, is, uh, is testing it now. Uh, but in most of their shoes, their shanks are more like a really hard foam. If you look at the fusion rev four video shank is, is mostly foam, which is interesting. That's what's giving you all the thing. What is the best shoe for juniors lotto uh, best shoe for juniors? Same as for adults. If you're a junior and you're playing a lot, uh, if so, if it's, so if it's my kid and playing, I would want him in a shoe that is a little bit more maximalist, a little more protective because a kid's body and their bones, not the same as an adult. Um, a kid is not just a miniature adult. They, their bones, ligaments, tendons, their metabolic system, it just runs a little bit differently. So if it's my kid, I can't give specific advice to, to kids everywhere, but if it's my kid, I would want him in something maximalist, right? Like the, the soul court boost or something like that. Just something that's going to give a ton of protection to a little kid's growing bones. And especially because kids are training so much in one sport now, like kids aren't playing different sports anymore. Whereas when I was a kid, I ran track, played football, American football and played tennis. And then I played like volleyball too, because my friends dragged me onto the volleyball team. So I was playing a bunch of different sports. So I was using different muscles all the time. Whereas nowadays, like kids just play soccer or kids just play basketball or just play tennis. And so they're getting all these overuse injuries. So that's why I'm always gravitating parents that come to my office say, you know, get the most protective shoe you can. Uh, just because if, if the kid is going to keep playing like that, um, just want to protect their foot. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of uh, looking back and forth at it. I can't have it on because if if they catch me, they'll uh, they'll copyright strike me. But I don't know if, if in your neck of the woods, wherever you're tuning in from, if you noticed the Federer match, the the, the last one he played before he um, he defaulted uh, not before he defaulted before he uh, went out of the tournament. It wasn't available in the United States. You could not watch it. You had to pay for Peacock Premium, which is like an NBC streaming service which was just like uh, my buddy, Craig Shapiro, who has the Craig Shapiro podcast and you should be listening to him. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, but he had a, a great thing. It's just big title, how to kill a sport. And that's what it was. It was ridiculous. Um, yeah, no problem. Roland. Thanks for coming in. Foro Nadal. I, yeah, I'm not surprised. D Hey, what's up? Are you going to review the Nike uh, zoom GT cut? Yes, I am. Um, I'm kind of, trying to figure out how I want to review it. So I did a review on the drop in midsole in the GT cut a couple of weeks ago. Um, and just kind of my concerns, thoughts about that. But yes, I'm going to, there are so many reviews out on it flooding the market right now. Cause Nike gave it to a bunch of, um, like basketball and sneaker reviewers. Uh, so there's been a ton of reviews on it. Um, I'm not sure if Nightwing has done his review yet on wear testers, uh, but if he has, that's the kind of the person I trust in terms of basketball shoe reviews. So, um, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen his review on it yet if he's done one. Uh, but yes, I will do one once kind of the fervor comes down and I can kind of analyze what everybody else has said about it. Uh, cause I always like to kind of take, you know, usually there's a theme on the shoe. Like it's, it's, it's got a really quick ride or something. You know, there's always like a theme that one of these companies is pushing and I usually like to test that out. So I usually kind of wait, uh, in terms of basketball shoes, but I do have the Adidas next level coming up. I've been trying to review it. There's been so many other new shoes coming out that I keep putting it to the side, but I will be reviewing the Adidas next level basketball shoe pretty soon. Yes, I did talk about the Babylon Pro Pulse Fury. Yeah, the Babylon Pro Pulse Fury to me is just a little bit of a watered down version of the Jet Mocks. The Jet Mock to me is, is the best shoe in the Babylon line. Um, the, the Fury is good. The uppers to me are just a little bit more uh, generic. Um, so nothing wrong with them. Midsole still has that great Babylon EVA that's going to give you a ton of spring back. Um, but if I had my choice, I'd go to Jet Mock 3 or the Jet Mock, even the Jet Mock 2 over the Pro Pulse Fury. But uh, the Fury and the Rage, I, I still think, are, are fine. If, if you just don't mind a little bit more of a not as comfortable, not as well performing upper. Welcome from Bangladesh. Good to see you. Have you thought about reviewing more rackets in the future? Or would you like the head radical compared? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually switched to it. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to. I think I'm probably going to do it on my shorts channel if I'm when I start doing reviews again. When I was doing a bunch of tennis racket reviews, I was really starting to get like really bad tennis elbow and shoulder pain. And uh, my strokes were just going to garbage. If you look at some of those videos, most of the videos are of my dad blowing shots past me because um, I was just really, my confidence was just shot because I just couldn't get a rhythm in a racket and my shoulder started to go on me. So I, that's why I kind of stopped for a while and I started just focusing on the shoes. So yeah, now that I have like a, a permanent racket that I'm going to use, that I can test stuff against, like I can test new rackets against this. Now it's kind of like my, my normal, I, I, I will start. Uh, but it, like I said, if, if not on this channel here, I have a channel called tennis product shorts, which is, I was testing out shorts content on, uh, and I'm probably going to change that into just an all racket and just like tennis just like, you know, all kind of just every, anything tennis. Like I, I want to, I want to do a big review on tennis balls too. Like every tennis ball out there, just test all of them. Uh, so I do want to do that. And there's a bunch of stuff I want to do that just doesn't really jive with this channel. Cause a lot of this channel now is about shoe technology and, you know, making custom shoes, which is where the channel is kind of going here. Um, so yes, I will be probably on the shorts channel. A6 gel resolution, eight or cord FF2. I actually think I do have a video on this on the shorts channel too. Um, for me, it's the A6 Cord FF2 all day, no question. The Gel Resolution 8 is a great shoe for people with flat feet that don't have problems with heel slippage. It's also a great concept shoe. The A6 Gel Resolution 8 to me is kind of like a concept car, right? It's a great starting point. If you if you have flat feet, it's an awesome shoe because you have a hard time slipping out of it. For me, as someone with a neutral to high arch foot, I slip out of it. And so I keep banging my heel into it. So I get, like they give me heel pain. Um, now, it, it, my, so I, I play at two tennis centers. At both of those tennis centers, I've actually recommended to a few people to go into them because of, of their feet. And they've had nothing but success. And they bought four or five pairs because they're afraid it's going to, you know, they're, they're going to stop making it. So there are people I think they're great for. The Court FF2, I think, is just a better all-encompassing shoe. It plays better, fits better. Whoops. It fits better uh, just all around. I think it's a little more durable. Um, so it, to me, I would go with the Asics Court FF2 uh, just because I think it suits more players. And the all-court version of it plays well on clay, whereas the all-court version of the Asics Shell Resolution 8, I mean, it's like playing ice capades on clay. So that's that's my uh, that's my thoughts. Which orthotics would you suggest for cushioning in the vapor light? I switched to the soul match balance after two months since my legs hurt a lot with the lights. If it were me in the vapor light and you're looking for cushioning, I'd probably go with a custom orthotic. If it were me, um, if you're looking for just support, which is like where, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to tell someone to go into the court light too, like if I have a patient comes in, not the court light, the vapor light. Um, if I have a patient coming into the office that, that pulls up the vapor lights and says, what do I do with these? And they don't want a custom orthotic. Cause remember custom orthotics is going to cost you 250 to 500 bucks, depending on who you go to. If you're going to go with over the counter, I'd say just throw a pair of power step or super feed in them. I personally like power step. My wife, who's also a physician, she swears by super feet. Um, she's a lot lighter than I am. So she can use the super V because they're just a little bit less stout than power step power step. And you can put a rhino in a power step and it won't bottom out. So for me, I would put a power step in them. That's just my preference. Let's say if you ask my wife, it would be the, uh, super feet. What is the best shoe for us? Heavier dudes, 200 plus, but athletic and agile. Love the GP turbos. And now with the vapor X and the gel resolution eight. So gel resolution eight is great. If you're a heavier person, if you're, if you don't have a neutral to high arched foot, the gel resolution eight's phenomenal. The trustic system, the external heel counter, um, that Dyna bar on the outside. I mean, they're, they're phenomenal. The Vapor X or the Vapor 10, whatever you want to call it, it's probably one of the worst shoes for a heavier person. Um, if it's me, it's the Diodora Blue Shield 5s, the Diodora Blue Shield Flies, the Lotto Raptor Hyper Pulses, the new ones. I had no, speaking of, I had no idea how expensive the Hyper, uh, the, the, the Raptors were. Because when they sent it to me, it wasn't on the market. And I just assumed it would be along the Court FF2 line, you know, maybe somewhere the GP, like between 120 and 160. And then someone tells me it's like over 200 bucks. Now you get what you pay for. So they're going to give you a ton of cushion. Then they, now I'm hearing that, that you can't get in the United States. Uh, one, one of the super fans here, Mark, 
uh, contacted Lotto to try to figure out how to get them in the United States. And they just said they're really not shipping them. Now I learned with Joma, the Joma shoes I did a, a review on, which are awesome shoes, by the way, that you can order them from Europe. It just takes a while and pay for shipping. And so like I said, that's how I ordered the Jomas. I just went on their website, went on Google translate and bought them. So you can get them, but then you're going to pay a ton. Then you got to pay shipping on top of that. So I, I think I do have a, a, a code for the lottos. If you're going to try to get them, make sure you use the code because at least you'll get a little bit off. It'll probably cancel out the shipping to the United States. If you're in the United States, if you're somewhere else, then if you're in Europe, then go get the Raptors. Um, if you look at my top five shoe video or the Lotto Raptor Hyper Pulse video, there is somebody from Spain that found a website that has them for a pretty good deal. So check that out. But Hefty Players, the Diodoras, the Blue Shield Five Flies, Lottos, GP Turbos for sure. Um, even the, the react vapor next is great for a heavier player. It's just, I, I wouldn't want to play tennis on them. If you can make a shoe, what kind of characteristics would you put into it? Great, uh, great uh, question. So, you know, kind of this one, um, I would want something with pretty sticky outsole. I don't slide. I mean, I, I do for the channel, but if I'm like playing, playing, I'm not going to slide. I, I don't have enough confidence. So I, I kind of know how to slide to make it. I know how to slide if I'm not playing at a hundred percent. Like I know how to do it when I'm really paying attention to sliding. So I, I would want something that's a little stickier. I would probably make a shoe with all herringbone. So something like the soul court boost or the soul match bounce. So my outsole would be all herringbone. Um, I would have a shank kind of either like the Babolats here, which is a super thick polypropylene shank underneath. Um, I would want continuous rubber like the Lotto Mirages or the Diodora Blue Shield 5, just straight rubber. So you have a lot of a lot of opportunities for grip. Um, my midsole, probably be something like React Foam mixed with, like almost something like in the React, like Nike Reacts. Their midsole is great. I would think that. And the uppers, uh, I would like something kind of like this, cagey, like the Solution Speeds. Something like this cage rubber, or like the Cord FF2, three-piece tongue, something like that. that that's kind of what I would want. I would want something mid range, like not nine to 10 ounces, but not 16. So somewhere in that 12, like kind of like these, like 12, 13 ounces. And then, um, it, honestly, like my favorite midsole is the GP turbo because of the full length zoom air and because of the full length Pebex, because you, you're getting, you're not getting that super stiff material in the midsole, but you're getting enough support. So with the Pebex plate that runs all the way through the GP turbo, it's really thin. So you don't feel it, but it's still giving you that support because it's engaging at different points during your gait cycle. So it's almost like a custom fit. Whereas in the Lacoste shoes that use Pebex too, it's just a super, they use a really thick Pebex, super stiff in your arch. So it holds your arch up really well, but it makes the shoe really uncomfortable. So that's the, all the characteristics I would use. No, just the sides. I shave my head every so often when I get really annoyed having to get up. If, if I'm having to get up really early in the morning, then I shave my head. If I'm not having to get up really early in the morning, then I usually grow it up. Hey, welcome from the Philippines, Jester. Good to see you. Yeah, tennis ball compare. So I have, um, I have a bunch of equipment in my garage that I hastily bought about a year ago when I thought I was going to do this really extreme tennis ball comparison. And I had a local high school physics team that I was going to work with doing it. Um, and then two of my tennis shoe videos blew up and uh, relatively, I should say relatively. And I said, oh, I'm just going to go with the tennis shoe stuff right now. And I just kept putting it on the back burner, putting it on the back burner because it's an expensive video to make. Um, but once I think, I think once this channel here gets, I'm kind of on autopilot and I have some videos lined up. I'll start working on the, that I'll start working on the rackets, balls and strings channel. And also my, my tennis shoe reviews just do much better. They just get way more views. I, uh, my, the Wilson review I did got a ton of views for some reason. Then all my other racket reviews just do kind of middle of the road. But if I put out a, a shoe review, I kind of like my shoe review, where I go through all the steps of it. That always seems to just, it, people just seem to like it better. Probably cause I'm a, you know, I'm a foot doctor. So it'd be the same as like an elbow surgeon, you know, doing tennis racket reviews. And if there is an elbow surgeon out there or a shoulder surgeon that wants to do racket reviews and wants to collaborate, be my guest. I would love to help you out because that'd be a really interesting channel. <laughs> All right. 
So Nish bought some soul match bound shoes, which feel great, but now I'm getting pinching on the inside of my foot, just below the big toe joint. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they're too wide. I have no idea because I haven't examined your foot. Uh, but the soul match bounces actually, I have them right here. So the soul match bounces is the outside of the shoe, but it same deal. Actually, I have the inside of the shoe right here. Okay. All right. So here's the soul match bounce. And you're getting pinching on the inside right here. So here's big toe, big toe joint. This A frame right here has a shoelace in it. You can always try to skip the shoelace and just put it into the regular lace line and see if that helps because that'll stop pulling, right? Number two is these are really floppy, kind of flimsy uppers. And then you have the really hard, you have the same outsole as the sole court boost, which is one of the most stiff outsole and midsole combos on the market right now. So it just might be that you need to break it in. It might be that the A-frame right here is pinching. It, it just could be that your foot doesn't match the shoe, right? Some people just, if you have, if your toes are going one way or the other, some shoes just don't work. Um, I always see how that does. A lot of times I'll just tell people to th throw tennis balls in their shoe to stretch them out in one specific area. And that's actually, uh, if you look at the video where I made the team in Muguruza shoes, that's where I was doing. I was actually sticking socks and tennis balls in these areas to let them cure overnight because it's a flat surface, right? So I needed pressure. So that's how I actually did that. So you can, you can mold a shoe with just socks and tennis balls stuffed in them. So you can try that too. Yeah. So yes, I am trying. So Nadal plays with three different shoes, which are all not being produced anymore. So I'm on all these like secondhand websites. He also uses the rubber from a shoe, which is a continuous rubber in a two pod formation. So I actually have to shape rubber. I've never shaped rubber before, so I'm learning how to do it. Uh, so that video is going to take me a long time to produce. I, I'm going to try to do it. And even if I can't do it, I'll make a video on my attempt to make them. Uh, so it will come up. Yes, we will do one. Best shoes for paddle on Mondo grass. I'm guessing that's like that's the synthetic. Um, B, that would be my best shoes for clay too. Uh, any For me, anything on grass, like real grass or synthetic grass, or just like the turf that you play paddle on, like the platform type grass. Um, I like the Eclipsian 3s. I like the Vapor Pros or the Vapor 10s um, and, or anything with herringbone. Like the, uh, like the Soul Court, like anything with herringbone it is great for me. The reason why... A lot of clubs, a lot of grass clubs will not let you use herringbone. I found out when I was in Rhode Island at the International Tennis Hall of Fame back when I was in, that was my first year of medical school, was that they won't let you use herringbone because it tears the grass up too much. It almost grips too well. That's why they want you in nubs because then you really can't slide. So um, so herringbone is great. Uh, so that that's where I would go. But yeah, I remember my dad and I, I'll, I'll have to put a picture of it somewhere on the community feed. But my dad and I were at the International Tennis Hall of Fame. My, my first summer, uh, I had just completed my first year of medical school. And uh, my dad and I, and my, my mother, we all went to uh, Rhode Island to the International Tennis Hall of Fame. And we booked the center court where they have like the, the old casino there. And they wouldn't let us on because they looked at us and we had like, we had all of our garb on. Like we were, we looked like, you know, fools. We had all our whites on and everything. And they're like, oh, you guys are way too serious. We don't want you guys playing on center court. And we convinced them that we stunk. And at the time that was only a year out from me playing college tennis. So I was still around a five Oh at that point. So we, oh, we tore that grass up so bad. We didn't intend to, but we just ended up playing for like, we bought two hours of court time. Uh, but yeah, so that's, yeah, I don't think the International Tennis Hall of Fame is going to have me back anytime soon. Okay, thank you. Not trying to lace the A-frame. Yeah, yeah, try that and then um, let me know in the comments, in the video or any video I have. Just let me know in the comments. If you're anything to tell the aspects of shoe composition, make sure reviews inform. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, sometimes I feel like I get too in the weeds about shoes because the things I care about aren't necessarily the things that people care about. Um there's really no one else that's reviewing tennis specific shoes. Like I know I do tennis and basketball and pickleball and things like that, but there's a lot of people doing tennis specific shoes. So I don't have a lot to compare myself to. I mean, there's basketball shoe reviewers. Um, and, and like I said, wear testers is just, I think, I think they're awesome. Um, in terms of like their basketball reviews. Cause I think that he, 
he's saying a lot of the same things that I'm saying. He just says them in, in a different, like I'm, I, I think I talk more analytical. So if you're looking for basketball shoe reviews, he's giving you the info. He's just giving it to you in a little, and just in his own way. So, um, but like I said, I am doing more basketball shoes. Uh, but like I said, I think a lot of the channel is, is going to be dedicated to kind of doing custom builds and fixing shoes that I don't like basically and trying to do uh, pro customs and things. So we'll be getting more into basketball because I do want to do some pro basketball shoes too and kind of make, like I'd love to make the Hardens. I would love to try to make those shoes just to kind of see what the difference is between his signature shoe and his signature shoe that he's actually wearing. That's a lot of signatures and S's. Okay. Now about Pure Strike Gen 2 or Gen 3. Um... I like the third generation. I think it's a little more of a lively racket. I am probably the only person that you will ask that will say that. Um, they in the comments lets me know what is the score of the Nadal and uh, Djokovic match. It just went off my TV. So if anyone can let me know what the score is, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, for me, the third generation is a little more lively. I just like swinging it more. Second generation, I think, just has a little more control, a little better. Uh, so I think if you ask 10 people, nine of them will say the second. I personally, I like the third better. Do I still play on the Baffert? I have not played Barefoot since that video, but I have played in the Court Light 2 and the Vapor Light 2, which is kind of similar. I want to do a video because I, I think I got about 10 comments about playing in Vibrams, the Five Fingers. So I think I might do a video playing basketball and playing tennis and playing pickleball and Vibrams. I think that'd be interesting because I think that was a good point. I think that was a missed opportunity on my part to not incorporate that into the barefoot video. I wanted it to be just barefoot, right? I didn't want it to be clickbait. Like, oh, it's barefoot, but then here I am in a shoe. But I do think a Vibram video on basketball, tennis, and pickleball would be awesome as I take a sip of my Slippery Rock University mug. If anybody... um. Uh, I want to check it out. That is my old tennis team. They don't have a men's team anymore that they cut it my last year at Slippery Rock. But they still do have a women's team. They are pretty darn good. If you are a female in the audience and are looking to play college tennis, contact Matt Meredith at Slippery Rock University. He is the best tennis coach I have ever worked with, and I have worked with some of the best. He is by far the best one. Just a little love for Matt out there. He just sent me another hoodie. So thank you, Matt. Love wear testers channel my new phase because you're just as detailed as they are. Keep the great work. Yeah, I love wear testers too. I don't know how he gets away with putting all the video clips in his video of like movies and TV. I'd love to ask him how he gets away with that. Um, because I'm always worried about getting a copyright strike, but I, I love it because he always finds like the best TV clips to put in there. It always keeps it super entertaining because sometimes shoe content can get a little dry, right? Like how much can you possibly say about a shoe before you start getting into like foot doctor nerd? I mean, I think it's interesting, but I'm always worried that someone else is going to. He always fits those like really good, funny TV clips in there. So that's why I always like watching them. Favorite shoe right now. Um, watch my top five shoes. Uh, but it's a Diodora Blue Shield Fives. The doll is still leading. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Just interesting hearing how much foot skin regenerates. Yeah, um, there is an entire textbook on this. Uh, there's an entire science on this. Um, the entire business of anti-aging creams is all built on these principles. So if, if you look at all the commercials, you, you'll see, um, you know, like Jennifer Aniston's holding her face saying, you know, doing this, uh, trying to like regenerate ceramides in your skin and things like, and all those anti-aging creams. And that's a billion dollar industry. And it's all based on that science. It's all based on barefoot running science. And some of that science from barefoot running has pioneered some a lot, I would say, if you go to Target and look at the skin cream aisle, most of those are made from science and technology we figured out from barefoot runners. Uh, no one says that because that's not, you know, it's not on brand, but a lot of a lot of that stuff comes from uh, barefoot sports. So I want to say I love your videos and also who's your favorite tennis player and why. Thank you very much. Uh, current or all time? So currently, probably still Federer. I mean, I also, uh, I, I used to like Benoit pair until he started just being weird. Um, it, but I've always loved his game cause he was so just nonchalant. Like he was doing absolutely nothing out there. Uh, but he's been acting a little bit weird recently. So he's kind of, I've kind of fallen off him. 
I also really like Steve Johnson. So he's probably my favorite American player right now because I'm, I'm an American. Um, he he went through a lot and uh, in his life. I also just love his game, how you can just get away with having kind of like a mediocre slice. And I don't know how he wins as many matches as he does with that backhand, but he does. And I, I just find that supremely entertaining watching him play. I watched him play two matches at Winston-Salem the year before lockdown. And uh, I was just, his game was just so much fun to watch live just because you could actually see the wheels turning in his head of what he was doing, like what he was thinking, you know? So I, I thought that was great. Um, on the women's side, I would say right now, it's I'd say probably um, uh, Muhova. I'd say is probably my favorite. Um, but in terms of all time, Andy Roddick, no question. Andy Roddick and the greatest of all time, Andy Roddick and Pat Rafter. Um, Pat Rafter's game was probably my favorite to watch, especially because he had all the zinc on his nose and his cheeks every time coming to net. He just, he just looked like he was, I mean, I don't know. It looked like he was like surfing on the court almost, which I thought was just so cool. Um, I even bought his Prince TT warrior when it came out the white and gray one. I couldn't play with it. It was like the worst racket I ever played with, but I wanted to be just like Pat Rafter. Coincidentally, I always wanted to play with the the pure drive because Roddick played with it. And he was, because I was in high school when, when Roddick was coming to number one, I was 11th grade when he won the U S open and I could never play with the pure drive. Cause I, I just, I hated it and I wanted to so bad, but I couldn't, but those are, those are my favorite players. How much water drink snack eat during a match? What should be the quantity? Please discuss in some detail. So, uh, she it, it is different for everybody. Um, I hate to say that cause it's kind of a cop out answer, but there is a great way to find out exactly what you should be using. And, uh, it's different for every part of the world. There's companies in all parts of the world. So I'm not, I can't tell you this is a company, but go online and type in, um, sweat analysis or sweat analysis kit or how to test my sweat, get a strip. You'll just make sure you're playing tennis or running or something in heat where you're really sweating up a, a storm. And then you'll, you'll get like a little patch test and they'll actually test your sweat for what you're losing during the tennis match. And that will tell you exactly what you need. For me, I hate eating during a tennis match. It makes my stomach hurt. So I always have bare minimum before I play. So when I was in college, would be wherever. And our coach would like take us to like Ponderosa, if you're from the United States, or these big buffets. And every way, the men and women on the team are stuffing their face with food. And if I did that, I'd throw up. I just have like a little like piece of bread or a bar. And then I'd eat like crazy afterwards, but I could never play because it would just churn my stomach up. Uh, my dad is the exact same way. Um, I've, I've seen him like almost lose his marbles on court because he just ate too much beforehand. So many people need a lot. Um, my philosophy is you drink more prior to the match. Once the match starts, if you're trying to, to recuperate lost sweat, lost electrolytes, you're already behind the eight ball. That's you're done. So, but I would, I would get your sweat analyzed. Uh, it is a fascinating process. I'm probably going to do one of those on myself on the shorts channel or maybe over on TikTok. Cause I just had a video on TikTok, get a million views. It was this video. It was the team video on TikTok. got a million views. I, I didn't know that was possible. But uh, so if you want to hang out on TikTok, basically TikTok's interesting because I'll put a video up and then people will just argue with, within themselves. It's not like the comment section on YouTube where it's many people asking me questions. It's like a conversation. I'll get on TikTok and it's people arguing with each other. So it's really, and TikTok's an, a, a crazy interesting app. If, if you haven't tried TikTok yet, it isn't just people dancing to weird music. If you give the TikTok AI what it wants. Like if you downvote things or to say not interested and then like things like when people say like, and follow for more on TikTok, it's like one of the things they say, like on YouTube, subscribe for more. If you go on TikTok and just like the things and subscribe to the people you like the TikTok algorithm takes about half the amount of time that the YouTube al algorithm takes to get videos that you will really like. So it was at first, I'm like, oh, TikTok is still not doing this. And then once I started like figuring out the AI of it and how to get good videos, you do get them. Just watch out because there is a lot of false information on TikTok. So just watch who you are following. But TikTok's great, especially for tennis content. I, I like TikTok a lot for tennis. And especially bad, like shoe content too. More, more shoe people are on, on TikTok too. All right. Favorite shoe right now, uh, the Blue Shield 5s. Um, but 
um, make sure you watch the top five videos. I kind of discuss why it's not the best shoe for every person on every surface. What is happening to team? Yeah. So it's, I think it's the same thing that happened to Marat Safin after he won his first grand slam. Same thing that happened to Sloan Stevens. Same thing that's kind of happening to Sophia Kennan, although she has rebounded pretty well. It's like almost the same thing happened to Sophia Kennan after she lost in the Roland Garros final, which is like coincidentally the same thing with Sloan Stevens. Um, it's just that sometimes when you win your first, you know, when you're, when you haven't won one yet, you know, you're the underdog, you're, you're fighting, you're, you're trying to, to get to the top. Then when you win one and maybe you're expected to win another one, um, maybe that can get to you. For me, that would take the pressure off me. Like if I, if I was a professional and I was at that level, I'm like number three, four in the world. And everyone's saying, when are you going to win one? Like uh Carolina Pliskova, like everyone's always like, when is she going to win one? When is she going to win a major? When is she going to win a major? Like that would drive me insane. That would make me choke and, and, you know, and fall off the face of the earth. After I'd won one, I, I would, I think I'd be free because I, I got one in the bag. I'm done. Like everything else is just gravy, right? Sponsorship deals are here. I don't have to worry about money anymore. I don't have to worry about travel. I don't have to worry about people asking questions of me. I've done it. Whereas some people like in tennis magazine back in like 2005, it was way back. If you look at the article, Marat Sat, they interviewed Marat Safin about this because he had a, a little bit of a dip after he won his first major. And he said, he was saying these same things about how, you know, after you win, it's really hard to maintain that level and the expectations of it. And everyone was making fun of him so much, but I, I could, he, he, he said it in a way I really understood it. And I didn't think some people's me just mentality is just, it's just a little different. Um, Roddick, my idol. Yes. Glitter storm. Mine too. I bought this off some dude on eBay. I have no idea if that's his signature or not, but he said it was, I didn't care. It was the only fig jam that I could find. I had, eight, nine pairs of fig jams throughout my life. I also had about eight, nine pairs of the match day pumps. I gave, I threw a bunch of mine away. I gave them to like, I used to teach tennis when I was in college and in medical school for money in the summers. And I would give them away like little kids, like, like the Andy erotic too. So I give them. And now I'm thinking like I had every colorway, I had everything erotics. And now, and I'm like a tennis shoe reviewer on YouTube and I don't have a shoe. All right. My main, yeah, that's the thing. I wanted it to be my main racket. I just can't play in them. My type of swing style is not conducive to the pure drive. It's just, I, I wish it was. In my opinion, Tomoto, in my opinion, what is the best brand for what best brand for wide foot shoes? There is no best brand for wide fit shoes. Um, every brand has shoes that are good and every brand has shoes that are not so good. I'd say Diodora is the only one that has like every shoe is, is made wide. So I'd say if you're looking for a brand, I'd say Diodora. Adidas, the Soul Court Boost is my favorite wide fitting shoe. Um, because I feel like it gives you I feel like it gives wide footed players just a little bit more traction. So to me, that's my favorite shoe brand. And I'd say Diodora. Let me take a sip here of my Slippery Rock University mug. You know, Slippery Rock University's mascot. Okay. So how backwards is this, right? So you got a name for a university, Slippery Rock, right? So you'd think you do something with the rock, right? It's the pride. It's a slippery rock pride, like a pride of lions. So their mascot is Rocky, who's a lion. But if you look on all of the university website or any of their marketing, it all says the rock. And if you, if when we were playing tennis matches, it'd always be slippery rock, the rock. So, and then back in the seventies, they actually did change it. And the mascot was just a rock and they changed it back to Rocky. So I don't get that. So anybody from the, if slippery rock is listening, change your logo. All right. Hybrid or full bed of co-poly for intermediate advanced. I wouldn't use a whole bed of poly if it were me. I just think it's very comfortable. Um, I think for intermediate to advanced, I'd go, if it were me, I would go hybrid. Um, but coming from me who I, I don't really, honestly, I've never, had, I've never thought about strength. I have always just put in whatever, like I get crazy about my racket. Like it has to be the same. My racket has to be the exact same. My shoes, like when I was playing, have to, I mean, like it was, I was crazy about this stuff. My socks, the string I never cared about. I always just put in either gamma zo rough. Cause that's the string. Like when I was competing, when I was playing in, or now I put in either head sin gut or NXT with Duramax. Um, so I, I would hybrid just for comfort. Um, but I'm probably not the best person to ask that question. If you want an expert's opinion on it, ask Coach Glider Tennis. That's at Coach Glider Tennis on Instagram. 
he is the best person to ask about uh, that. Uh, Federer, if that's a question, at least in my opinion. But if Nadal wins this one, I, I mean, I don't think you can deny he's best of all time. No curious, and that's the players. I love Nick Kyrgios. N Nick Kyrgios, he, he can be a buffoon sometimes. However, number one, uses the underhand serve to perfection, right? And people think he's being a jerk when he's using it. He's not. He's just he's trying to win a point, right? He knows he can win a point with it. I think that's great. When he was goating Stan Wawrinka about his girlfriend the one time, like that was a little weird. However, um, and a lot of people do not like Nick Kyrgios. I, I, when he was at the U S open a few years ago, I, I don't, I, I look this up cause I'm not sure this is hundred percent correct. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure which school it was. There's a school shooting in the United States. I don't know if it was Sandy hook or, or somewhere else, but there was no press around. There was no nothing. He took every kid from that and the tennis team, or even just that school that wanted to play with him and play with them. No press around, no nothing. The guy does more charity work for underprivileged kids, uh, kids of victims of trauma, and just about any other player that I know. And he does it and never talks about it. He never, you know, is like showcasing it to the world. So there's a lot of, I think there's a side of Nick Kyrgios people don't see. Um, they just see kind of like the bombastic side of him. I, I do. I love, I, I do like Nick Kyrgios. I like his game more than anything. Um, cause I think it's just, it's just fun to watch. Um, I, like I said, yeah, he, he can act a, a little bit crazy sometimes, but I think someone that is willing to do that and that is not looking for any, you know, recognition from it there there's there, you know, I, I, I you got to respect that e even if you're not a Nick curious fan. So that's my opinion on him. I hope on will release Rogers, uh, match you the Roger pro, uh, for you to review, made a great choice with a soul match because of you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jester. Um, so yeah, so I've contacted on twice trying to get that shoe. Um, and I have not heard a word back. Uh, I I'm guessing I'm, I'm guessing they're just not going to sell it. You know, he pulled out of the French to train for Wimbledon. I don't think you do that unless you're really trying to make a big push for potentially your last event or last season. If Feder is not playing tennis with a bunch of eyeballs on that shoe, who's going to sell it for them, right? Who I mean, no, one, no one else is playing with On. That shoe was made specifically for him. I think On did their job. I think they got a ton of marketing out of it. I think everybody that's looking at Roger is looking at that shoe and clicking on On's website to learn more about it than they see On shoes. I know that anytime Roger plays a match, I can see this in my analytics, I get spikes in my views on his videos. So I know that that they're that it's working, that their marketing thing is working. I hope that they send me a pair because I think they'd be really interesting to review. Um, and I think they'll probably be made really well. Um, I actually do have a pair of on running shoes that I have reviewed. I have the video loaded up, but uh, my running shoe reviews just don't seem to really connect with the audience on this channel. If you guys want to see it, just let me know in the comments or you know send me a, a message in the community feed. Um, if you want to see it, I have it ready to go. I, I can always release it. Um, they're interesting shoes. Uh, if I was going to go 100% in a match, which you would use uh, Vapor Pro. Thoughts on the Pure Aero Racket? I love the Pure Aero Racket. Um, to me, it got a little bit... I don't know how to describe it. It was like annoying to swing. I thought that it played really well, and I liked the spin out of it. I don't like the beam design of it. Um, that might be because of my swing style. Um, but I, if you're looking for a racket to give you a ton of spin and a lot of pocketing, I think that racket pockets really well for a more power focused racket. So if you're looking for power and pocketing, I think that's a great racket for me. Just, I, I, I tested it twice. I really wanted to use it. Um, cause to me, it, it feel like it, it felt like it suited my game really well when I was looking at rackets. I never did a review on it. Uh, but I, I was testing it at the same time. I was testing these and the Wilsons and everything. And I just found that something like this just gave me a little bit of a better feel. Okay. All right. Nike Glitter Storm. Nike or Asics? I returned two Nike shoes already because it's just too narrow. And I have a medium width foot. What's wrong with Nike sizing? Nothing wrong with their sizing. It's that their shoes are made for an inflared foot that's very narrow. Or a straight foot, it's very narrow. You probably just have a foot that's a little bit more, maybe kicked out a little bit. 
your arch may push in a little bit. It might be that you're wide. It just might be you don't have the right shape. Nike's got a very specific shape in their shoes. Um, I agree. They should change it. Asics lasts are probably the best lasts out there. So I would go with Asics because you can pretty much go into any one of their shoes besides the Gel Resolution 8, any type of foot type, any type of width, and you can find one that's going to work for you. So for me, it would definitely be Asics uh, in terms of just a brand. How much, how many hours of tennis can I play every day in a week at max and still be healthy? My age is 27. That is completely, that is completely subjective. Um, if you are a 55 year old diabetic, um, who, you know, needs to relax their muscles and skin for a while, you can only play it two hours a week. Um, if you're 27 and have a metabolic condition or you have asthma or you think, so, I mean, that, that's almost an impossible question to answer. Um, I think it would it just depend on your conditioning. You know, it, it, remember, I mean, there's 27 year olds out there that are playing seven days a week, you know, look at the pros, but even they have to take blocks off. They have their training blocks and they take blocks off. It's kind of, I mean, it, it's, you kind of have to find that your own body, but a um, physiotherapist would be able to, if someone that's working with you constantly, like they have, you can't just ask them, but if someone that is actually working with you in like a gym setting, they could really tune you up to get you to be able to play for that amount of time on the topic of running how good of a runner should tennis players be like a decent 5k 10k more so this is interesting um there are two schools of thought like if you look at caroline wozniacki she ran the i think it was the new york marathon and she came back and played fine my college tennis coach matt meredith would scream at us if we decided to like go do like the pittsburgh marathon of the great race. Those are runs around here that are big. My college tennis coach always said, you never run for a tennis player. You never should run more than one mile at a time. That seems kind of extreme to me. He would want you to ride the bike or do the rower or things like that somewhere else to get you like your long-term, like aerobic cardiovascular work in. Um, my father used to run 10 and five K's all the time. And he would run, play basketball, and play tennis. He never gets tired on court. He's so well conditioned from running. One of my good friends, Mike Ridner, who's a head pro at Glen Creek Tennis Club here, he's one of the USTA elite professionals. He runs distance and he does great. There are some people that running distance kills their game because it kills all their fast twitch muscle fibers. I think it's dependent on you and if you're doing something to counteract what the running is doing to your body so like if you're playing like my dad was playing basketball all the time too so he was really working those fast twitch muscle fibers um my buddy mike is lifting every day so he is kind of counteracting that i think if you're just doing one or the other then i think long distance running might be a little bit detrimental to some like elite players now if you're just intermediate i don't think it matters i i think i think as long, i think it's just Great exercise. I think if you can run a decent 5K as a tennis player, you're doing pretty good. Nice. Sorry, I missed, missed the racket. I've chosen it. The Radical Pro. It is the Radical Pro. Yes. I um I, I used to play with the Radical, uh, the Flex Point Radical Mid Plus. Um, and I had to customize it so much in college to get it to do what I wanted. And I was really glad with the Radical Pro because I feel like they fixed a lot of the issues I didn't like with the Mid Plus versions. Um, but I have a... I have a different, my swing is just, my, my forehand sucks. It's just, I mean, it, it, I can hit it really hard. Um, I just, if you notice some of my forehands always land short in the court, um, just from me being self-taught, that's why. Hey doc, awesome content. Help me off narrow down to picking my first tennis shoe. Great. Thanks Leon. Uh, really, uh, glad to hear it. What do you think about the pure drive light? I'm a junior and I'm sort of in a gray area for strength because I'm 12. I either wanted to add weight to this rack or get a regular pure drive thoughts. So um, it, it kind of depends on how much you weigh and kind of how strong your arm is. Um, I started playing around 12, 13, 2, and I played with just a regular, I played with a Wilson Hyper Hammer 6 I think that's the racket I started with. And I wish I would have started with something lighter. So eh, most racket experts will tell you, you play with the heaviest racket that is comfortable to swing, right? So I think you play for an hour and one and see if it's comfortable. Play for an hour and another one, see if it's comfortable. Maybe play for a few days and one and see, just see what's comfortable. If if the pure drive light is too light and you got to add weight lead to it, I would probably go up if it were me. Like I said, I don't know exactly for you because I don't know what 
you know, how strong your arm is, how strong your shoulders are, your chest. Um, but the heaviest racket you can remember there gets to a point where you add so much weight to one of these rackets, these light rackets, it becomes unplayable because you, the weight's all off and, and most of the weight is outside the racket, not inside the hoop. So just remember that. Okay. Why did you decide to start a YouTube channel based on your profession? Great question, Ethan. Thank you. Um, without getting too verbose, I started my YouTube channel um, because I had always liked tennis shoes. So that's why I became a foot doctor. I mean, it was it was actually the opposite way around. I always liked tennis shoes. So that's why I became a foot doctor. And uh, it all, I mean, honestly, I remember when this shoe came out, this thing just fascinated me to no end. I mean, with, with the cages in there and just like the really streamlined design. I remember, I remember when this thing came out and Roddick was playing this for the first time. I remember thinking like, I had never seen something that cool in my life. And um, that was in high school. And then I uh, kind of, you know, it, you know, I love tennis. I, I originally, I wanted to be a tennis instructor at a, like at a resort, like in, you know, the Caribbean or Jamaica or something. I actually had an offer to do that in college. And my father kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of, you know, straightened me out a little bit. He was like, you know, you already passed everything. You know, you're, you're ready to go to medical school. Why are you doing this? Um, and sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't have, if I should not have listened to him, but, um, so I started channeling because, you know, I, I became a foot doctor and I got very busy in my practice, but it, I wasn't seeing a lot of the, the, the stuff that I wanted to see. Like I wanted to be doing this kind of stuff. Like I wanted to be telling people what tennis shoes to buy and running shoes and basketball. I mean, I like basketball and running too. Um, basketball more than running. But, uh, and so I thought to myself during lockdown, uh, I was only seeing two, three patients a day, just that we were only seeing emergencies and I had time. And I said, if I'm going to get my practice the way I want it, this is the time now. This is the time to, to make a, a change. And there is a really cool doctor out in San Francisco. Um, and now I'm blanking on the name. If my wife is in the chat, can you let me, I forget what the guy's name is, but he is practice. He does house calls to runners in San Francisco. That's all he does. And I was lecturing at a conference. I was lecturing about like how to do this one surgical procedure. And he's lecturing about runners and running shoes. And, and this was right before lockdown. And I'm like, all right, at some point I got to do this. And that's why I started the channel. Cause I wanted to get more of this into my profession. This is why I started. And it, it kind of just got to the point where I was doing a lot more just palliative care and just not doing sports medicine, which is what I really wanted to do. And this was my way of doing it. Kind of, this was my way of being a, you know, a tennis doctor, basically. That's why the original name of the channel was Tennis Pro Doc, because I wanted to do tennis stuff. Um, and then the name just kind of got confusing, so I changed for Dr. Zach. But because of this channel, there are people that come in my office all the time from around the Pittsburgh area that are that now come in to see me. And so now, whereas I was before, I was just seeing people that I played tennis with in the office or people that I used to play tennis with. Now I'm seeing people from all over. So it's really kind of expanded my practice too. And, and it's made my profession, made my practice a, a lot more enjoyable for me. Cause you know, every, every day I get someone coming in, um, you know, wearing one of these and it's just, it's a lot more fun. Hot bath or cold bath. Great question. If you can, I've always found the cold showers are the absolute best things for your muscles. Um, there is a YouTuber, Jamie O'Brien. He's a professional surfer. Uh, watch, I, I don't know, if, I don't know if he has it in the description, but watch the videos when he comes back from surfing and he just dunks himself in an ice tank. And he's getting, he's getting up there in age. He's in his forties now and he's still surfing like at a professional level. And that's how he does it. So for me, it's cold, uh, but that's just me. Do you think Clash Pro is suitable for competitive tournaments? That depends on who you ask. Um, I wouldn't play in a Wilson Clash for tournament play. <sighs> I'm told the new Clashes have a better plow through. Like they get a better weight of shot. I found that the Wilson Clash was the easiest racket to play in of any racket on the market right now. I, I honestly feel like I could get my three-year-old in a Wilson clash and he could probably start hitting top spin in it. Like it's just a super easy racket to play in and your shots feel great. They sound great. I don't know what they did to that racket, but all of your shots just sound amazing. But when I was playing with it, Mike, who granted was a six, five player at, at one point was just, just hammering me. And even my dad 
was hammering me on shots. I had no weight of shot. So to me, no. If you ask the Wilson reps now, they'll tell you that the new clashes have much more weight and so they are suitable. I would try the new version of it and let me know. If it were me and I'm playing in a Wilson racket in a match, it'd be the blade or it would be the 90s, like the the pro staff V13, not the RF, but just the mid. On that Rodic shoe, how do you think it compares the modern shoes? Won't ask you to tear it down. So I will be addressing this in a future video coming up very soon. Um, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't hold up well, put it that way. It, it would be great for somebody like John Isner, uh, somebody who's just like a one shot, you know, one, you know, serve and, and one, serve plus one. It plays, you know what it does? The the Fig Jam is just a better engineered Vapor Cage 4. That, that's all. The Vapor Cage 4 is basically the Reebok Fig Jam, just with too much tech and just the tech isn't good. So it, it, it would hold, if they, if they updated it with updated materials, yeah, it'd be great. But this shoe as is, it, um, it'd be hard to play a, the modern game in it. Which shoe is good for a high arch foot? Um, so I have a high arch foot, and my favorite's the Soul Court Boost or the Diodora Blue Shield 5s or the GP Turbo. And probably uh, GP Turbo, at least for me. Would I ever make a video on how to customize a racket? Um, honestly, I would have to learn more about customizing a racket. I have no idea what to do to customize rackets. Um, I only know how to weigh it and get it to like the same weight for each stick. Um, coach glider tennis and, um, uh, tennis, this tennis, this.com. Uh, his name's Javier. He's also at tennis, this on Instagram. Javier is the best racket customization expert on the planet. Any questions you have for him? Any questions you have on that, ask him. I must have missed this, but do you buy all the shoes and tear them down with your own money? That's a great question for my wife. And the answer is yes. Um, I have only received a few shoes. If I do receive shoes, I disclose it at the beginning of the video. Um, so I am open to companies sending me shoes. I always have a disclaimer that I send. Like as soon as they send me an email, I say, I can't tell you how this shoe is going to perform on court. I, I will hit with it. And, and however it does on a suicide test, that's how it does. However, it does on a serve test. That's how it does. Um, when, when it's super hot and I do the infrared test, that's how it's going to do. Some companies won't send them to me then some will. Um, Lotto right now, a uh, new balance is supposedly sending me their entire new lineup of shoes, like the new nine, nine sixes and the, and the lab V twos. So supposedly I'm getting them. Um, and I've been contacted by people from Adidas and ASICs never to send me shoes. I've been contacted by different companies to like ask me questions about my reviews or give feedback on reviews. But I think if I would do a sponsored review on something, it would probably be like, uh, let me see here. Like I'd, I'd let this company sponsor me like electric city, like the guy that makes the gun, because I wouldn't want to have a review. Let's say, let's just say, for example, Babolat, you know, said like, we will pay you a million bucks to sponsor to do these. Well then of course I'm gonna be like, yeah, these are the greatest things on earth. And then and no one would believe me any other video. Like my whole rap on YouTube is I have credibility, right? So, um, if I'm going to do sponsorship stuff, it'll probably be for things other than shoes. So for, you can probably bet that any shoe that I, that you, that I have is either with my own money or, uh, that the company agreed to my terms. Yeah, those are great. Love the Reebok match. You know, I liked the 95. I just, I couldn't. I understand the racket and I know why people like it. I just, uh, I was, it was, it was, it was a difficult racket for me to play with. Can I break down the Nike vapor next? Yeah, I actually have three videos on it and some more coming out. So, um, if you go into my 2021 new Nike tennis shoe videos, I have three videos, uh, breaking it down. Um, this is we're getting a little bit late in the stream. Uh, but it, it's got a ton of tech and 99.9% .9 of the tech is phenomenal but the shoe just has one Achilles heel and that is the tongue.
And it's really heavy. Tennis spin has a few episodes on the customized. Tennis spin, tennis spin, tennis spin. Yeah, tennis spin. He's the guy that owns the the racket shop, right? And he's got like the the two other pros he plays with. Um, I, I've I've seen a few of those things. Yeah. No problem. All right, slim socks or thick socks? The age old question. Depends. If you're a heavy sweater, then thin. And if you want thick, then two pairs of thin. If you're not a heavy sweater or you don't care. And then I say go with a pair of Thorlows. Nothing has made me feel better in my shoes than wearing Thorlo. I just not sponsored. I mean, Thorlo, and I, I agree. Thorlows are super expensive. They're unnecessarily expensive. Um, but I do a lot of stuff now in tennis shoes. Do a lot of reviewing of tennis shoes. And uh, those are the one thing that have made me feel better in my shoes. So if it's me, thick socks, um, I have an, I have best socks for athletes coming out again. It's been a year almost since the best socks video. So I have a new one coming out. The list is changing a ton. Um, after playing in a couple of those pair of socks now for a year, my opinions have changed a little bit. Um, and I'm going to add some different categories. So make sure you look out for that. V-Core Pro 97. If you hit with a lot of spin, they're good. You need to put a lot more spin on a Yonex racket than a traditional one. I have tried three Yonex rackets in earnest in really wanting to switch because I like, I like the idea. I like the design of Yonex and I like the longer mains. I think that's an awesome idea. And for me getting up there now, like now, you know, I'll be going into my late thirties pretty soon, which eh. I, I like that. The idea that I don't have to do as much. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't control the racket. Um, and, and for me, that was saying something because I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a more of a control player uh, and I just couldn't do it. However, the certain game style, if, if you do, if you, if you can't hit with a lot of spin, if you have a lot of like read your watch type motion in, in your swing, like if you really can do the windshield washer really well, great. Then I think the racket's awesome. Uh, but you have to have like, I mean, you like, you gotta be like this when you follow through. On a, on a Yonex, you really have to hit with a ton of spin. You got to get a ton of RPMs on it to bring the ball back down. Any sock recommendations, Bill? Yes. Uh, so I have a video, best socks for tennis. That really is best socks for anybody, but specifically best socks for tennis. My favorite are Thorlows. My second favorite are Selinkos. Completely different reasons. Selinkos breathe the best out of any sock I've used. So if like you want thicker, then go with two pairs of Selinko. Um, if you just want the best sock out there, like my favorite sock, 100% is Thorlo. Stance, though, makes a great sock. If you look at a lot of my videos now, you see those stance socks in them a lot. It's because they're awesome. Um, and I've been, you know, I've been playing in polo socks. I got a deal like on, I was at the outlets doing filming that video for that like, Skechers video. And I got a bunch of like, they were on sale, like polo athletic socks, and they're great. Okay. No idea. Um, should I take my feet for tennis? I have no clue. It just depends um, on pathology, your foot type injuries, things like that. Um, that's something you would definitely want to talk to a doctor about before you do. Yeah, same thing, Thorlo. Which Thorlos? The ones I got are weird with supporting mesh. Stance has me one these days. Yeah, I was just talking about stance. Um, Luca, A, hey, I like stance in terms of like just an everyday sock. Th I like Thorlo because they give me so much padding and I'm on my feet so much. Um, like I wear Thorlo's to work work just because um, with my job, I'm up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down all day. I have like four rooms in my office, right? And I'm just like ping pong and back and forth, right? I'm double booked all day. Just so I wear Thorlo's because they just make me feel better. Um, and so, but yeah, for tennis, if you're looking at something a little more breezy, stance, or Selenko. Tiny Dude Extreme, once again, I love your name. You are going to love a video coming out very soon. I found a really interesting pair of Zoom Zeros that I'm not sure people know exist. And the person had no idea what they had uh, who was auctioning it off. So it was really cool. I got it for a pretty decent price. Speaking of tennis spin, he included the soul courts in his list of overrated products. He has great reviews on tennis products though. Um, maybe because he didn't like the price of them, uh, or the hype around them. Cause like they're Adidas flagship. However, as a foot doctor, the 
shank plus the plastic uh, arch support plus the super wide heel. I mean, this shoe is like a foot doctor's dream, right? Um, so but the soul match bounces, you know, you can get a lot of the same things in the soul match bounce and, and spend less money. So there's that. Plus remember, you know, might be trying to, you know, stir the pot a little bit, you know, by saying a really expensive popular shoe is overrated. So, uh, but in, except as me as a foot doctor, um, someone comes in, I have, you know, let's say someone comes in, I have heel pain and I want to still play tennis um, or I'm getting back into tennis or I've had a calf strain or I have plantar fat, you know, or I have uh, arthritis in my big toe joint. I have put more people into the soul court boost than just about any other shoe. Every pro that's in my area that, that I treat is either in the la is in the nine, nine, six V fours or the soul court boosts or the GP turbos. Those are the three shoes I usually recommend to my buddies who are teaching pros and they all love them. So I, I, I don't think they're overrated at all. I, th I think they're one of the best shoes. Pro they're one of the best engineered shoes ever made. If they just found a way to put more bounce foam in them, because the boost just doesn't give you, I'll say boost is overrated. If, if you want to, if, if you if do a little agreement there, I think boost is way overrated. I think boost sucks in terms of performance but it's great in terms of longevity, saving your foot. Like bounce foam is much better in terms of performance. Boost foam though, um, like if it were me and like I just had foot surgery and I'm coming back playing tennis, I'm like, well, what should I get? Like, I don't want to hurt myself. I, I get the soul cord boost. Smart wool. Yeah, you know, wool is all right um, for certain people, some people have really bad sensitivities to wool. So I never, ever, ever, um, recommend wool to people that, um, have like a lot of sweating issues or dermatitis. So I typically don't include them because you just can't, it, it, there's just, you just can't, um, you can't recommend them to a lot of people, but yes, a lot of people love wool. I mean, they, they breathe better. They last longer. So yeah, I mean, in terms of like a hiking sock and things, you're not, I mean, then yeah, of course, um, for tennis, for me, uh, just in terms of, mass recommendations or, you know, for the masses, uh, I'd rather be in cotton. It's my preference. Just, and that, that's coming from that is it from a foot doctor, not as a player for him backhand service volume. What's the most important shot for singles return of serve age old question. How much toe room at the end of the toe thumb width? Yeah, I think thumb width is fine. Um, I actually, it's actually like my pointer finger width is usually how I go. Uh, but yeah, let me see. I have big hands. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I use a four and five eighths racket. So my thumb's pretty big. Um, pointer finger width, different for everybody. You don't want to get any bigger than the thumb, right? Because then the, the foot will bend. I can't even do it. But the foot will bend here instead of here, right? Then you get two bend points. And then guess what happens? You fall over. All right, so me, uh, just a heads up, I will be uh, um, going down off the stream here and I'll let my kids up from his nap. So we'll probably be going to our pool pretty soon. We just put a pool in over the winter time. Uh, it took me about four months to build the pad for it. And I built all the stuff around it, the retaining walls and everything. Um, so I'm going to enjoy it now. It is uh, nice. Our, our backyard's about a half acre um, and it's all like lush forest behind it. And our, our pool is one of these. So we, we, we couldn't put a traditional in-ground pool because our yard is so sloped. So we did one of those ones that are um, like a hybrid. So it starts in ground and it goes out. And that's why I had to build the, the pad around it. And so it's a two level deck. So when you're in the pool, like it just looks like you're like in this canopy. It's really neat. So, but yeah, I'm looking forward to going out there today with my kid and playing. We play a game called pig dogging. If you guys know what pig dogging means, it means going like fakie on a surfboard. Um, so we try to like skim the surface of the pool. So he's wanting me to do that with him today. So we we'll answer these last couple questions. Though. Uh, Wilson clash new version. Did you mean the pro or a version that's not out yet? I agree with you. I make less unforced errors, but I'm able to finish points and we to serve. Yeah. That's why I said, I, um, the, the clash, I think that's the new version. Yes. I, I, I get Wilson has so many rackets. So does head I mean, they have like a million rackets. So yeah, what they say, whatever the, the one that came out, like what, like, six weeks ago or something or just really recent. They say that one has more weight to shot. All right. Sorry. I lost the screen there for a second. 
Um, been playing pickleball pretty seriously lately. Me too. Towards my running shoes, and I'm looking for a good, fast, lightweight court shoe. I tried the Nike Court Next, but it's uncomfortable. Yeah, do not wear the Next for pickleball. That is probably the worst shoe, uh, Ivan. Um, so yeah, and definitely not running shoes for pickleball either. I have a video, top five shoes for pickleball. Um, and I wish I had, where are they? They're upstairs. Um, the Adidas Ubersonic 4 is my favorite pickleball shoe right now. Followed very closely um, by the Deodore Blue Shield 5s. Um, and, and honestly, the Jet Mach 3s probably are, I, I haven't played pickleball on them yet, um, but the these are probably a, a good alternative too. You want something light, speedy, with a really nice lateral flange for those quick little, like, you know, little stutter step movements. Um, especially like when trying to get like, All right. Hey, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, my internet's getting a little unstable here. Um, actually it's just storming now. So that's probably why. So, all right, I'm going to end it now just cause I think this is getting a little bit patchy, but I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me here today. If there's any questions you have any, anything, just make sure you leave it in the comments, the videos. Like I said, I do not check Twitter or Instagram DMS nearly as much as YouTube. I have YouTube actually, uh, on my phone. So, um, I get notifications. So if you have a question or anything like that, you want to discuss something with me, uh, try to do it on YouTube. Um, cause I usually reserve Instagram, Twitter DMS, uh, just cause it filters them out so much. So I typically don't get them unless, um, I'm like friends with you or I've been following you. Uh, so just make sure we're doing that. So, okay. Um, everybody, I hope you have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from and make sure you catch the next custom shoe coming out this week. It's going to be a good one. I'll see you.